18 point maximum here in the corresponding test 12 months ago heat three we'll look for Jessup and Moran possibly to show up to the first quarter there are the swift uh, front runners here we go and Jessup's away from the inside of Moran from the outside up to the corner who's got the drop it will be Moran Moran in front second place Jessup Irmalenko is third Tatum got squeezed out at the first turn showing his liking for this crazy little 300 meter foxhole he foul. Jessup the second, Erlenka pushing hard on him, takes him at the back. Well, this is Sean Moran, who won the World Long Track Championship with a broken leg or just a, over a broken leg. The battle begins to be joined for second place about these Americans, they do not give up, and Ermolenko will buzz around the outside of Jessup, and Jessup cannot afford to be complacent into the last corner, and I think Jessup's going to be taken, and that sheer enthusiasm and encouragement for Ermolenko, he didn't give up, he kept going on the last lap, and that's been the difference between the English and the Americans in this series, the Americans just keep pegging away, they take maximum points there from Heat 3. Three heats gone, the American banners high there. Six points in front. There is the score 12 6 as we move into heat number four. And the lineups for there you can see Paul Woods and John Louis for England. For America, their number one partnership, Bobby Schwartz and Dennis Sigalos. Across the line then in heat four on the inside, Bobby Schwartz in white. Next to him, Paul Woods in red. Grid three, we'll just have a look across there. It will be Dennis Sigalos who recorded. The last place in his opening line, he'll be anxious to make amends for that. There's Sigalos just back to the left of our pitcher on the outside. John Louis, who should know every inch of this Foxwell Heath circuit, having started his career here and been such a part of their success story. Back in the squad, now rides with Kings Lynn just along the way in East Anglia. Still a formidable opponent, although maybe his better days have gone. Still very lively, though. Louis on the outside. Here we go, 6 12 for scoring. America's favourite. This is heat number four. You see we have an awful long time before they are to the way they go. There's a pretty close one up to the first corner. It is Schwartz in front and Woods has didn't. A brilliant corner there and locked back on the inside. Woods leads it in second place at Schwartz. In third place it is Sigalos. And that's the two Eastbourne teammates who are battling it out in front. And again the referee is going to stop it. And this really is getting to be just a trifle farcical. The referee stopped the first heat and it looks like he's going to exclude Paul Woods for, it, for touching the tape. Let's have a look again. Let's have a look at it. Did he touch the tapes? Well, I would not care to put my life on it. It looks like Woods is coming out and that is mystifying. So heat four for the second time of asking with Jeremy Doncaster coming in for the aggrieved Paul Woods and it would appear he had a case there. It must have been an infinitesimal touch if he did touch the tapes and referee Frank Ebden is getting uh, more discussion and controversy here than Clive Thomas on a good day. There is Jeremy Doncaster coming into the action for his first test appearance. We'll look across the line for Heat 4 on the inside Schwartz. Next to him, Doncaster. Grid 3, Sigalos on the outside. John Louis away this time. And it's Schwartz again. And Sigalos going with him. Schwartz in front. Sigalos and Doncaster trying hard to tiger between the two Americans. They look for each other. They know exactly where they are. And it's the old Californian one-two here. And they'll stick together like blue. The England pairing have got a lot of work to do now. They're going to split these two two of the great team men they're understanding virtually telepathic they're looking for each other and I really think that Jeremy Doncaster will need a steamroller to get between them and he typed steamroller at that so England after that encouraging start in the first heat when Chris Morton won it and there he stopped the hammer from the Americans and Doncaster almost ran over the back of Schwartz there Schwartz looked back and in one of the famous Muhammad Ali glares. This is the last lap. And the Americans are beginning to run away with it. Over the line, Sigalos for Wicks. Second place, Schwartz. Third there was Doncaster. 
And that puts the Americans 10 in front, and England really have a mountain to climb already. Well, Carl Glover, first of all, what about these refereeing decisions? He seems to be very, very keen on the job, but, I mean, we were warned before the meeting started. You touch the tapes, you're out. The man made it perfectly clear, even from heat one, and so we, we can't really argue about it. If he says a thing and he carries it out, then we can't argue about it. I think you were a bit relieved that Michael Lee changed his mind in the dressing room. He got changed and said he was storming out of the meeting at one stage. Yeah, Michael, sometimes he was off like a, a bottle of pop, but he, he realised that he's a sensible lad. He's come back, there's no problem. Well, he made a very good start to the meeting, but suddenly it's all going wrong very quickly for England. Yeah, the, the referee decision seems to be upsetting us more than the Americans, but we've got to get back into it. I mean, it's just, there's no good arguing about it or even worrying about it. We've got to get stuck back in and get on with it. And let's have a look again, the evidence on television, you can see Paul Wood just touches the tapes there. It was a long time before the start, but the referee, Frank Edmund, sticking to his job in the most Corinthian way and takes him out. So that leaves the score there with America now 10 points up with four heats completed, and we're coming on to heat number five. Let's look at the lineup for heat five. There are the pairings, and uh, on the grid it will be Dave Jessup on the inside. Next to him, uh, we have Lance King, grid three is Calvin Tatum on the outside. It is John Cook, King and Cook recorded a maximum in their opening heat. Jessup, it has to be said, was a little complacent, allowed himself to be caught on the last lap. He'll be anxious to atone for that. Calvin Tatum, well, this young man, 20 years old, ex-public school boy, a sensation at Wimbledon last year. Really has an awful lot on his plate in at this level so early in his career. There is Jessup, David Jessup, of course, who was born in Ipswich, now rides just along the way at King's Lynn. And DJ, now 31 years old, the leading rider in the world for so long. A bit unlucky in world finals, we've seen that so many times. Let's just hope he can get his act together here because England need his stability as we come into heat five. And up to the corner is Jessup, and Tatum's got away as well. So it's England one and two. King going through on the inside of trying to find the line, and Cook after him. And Cook coming around the outside, and Tatum has pressure now from both the Americans. Jessup in front, and the Americans will really duck and dive to try and win the way through. We saw this at Cradley against the England pairing, and Jessup's allowed Tatum to go on, and it's getting terribly, terribly tight in there. King has split them, coming through hard now is Cook, it's still Tatum in front, Jessup has allowed himself to go from first to last, and here comes Cook, uh, rather King down the inside of Tatum, and the Americans are so tenacious, they really have got the bit between their teeth, it is King in front, great race from the young Californian, Tatum still hanging on, I don't think Cook's finished yet either. To the last lap, King in front, Tatum now under pressure from John Cook and Jessup at the back. And here comes Cook again, and Cook will try down the outside. He will not give up this lad, trying down the inside. He's really hit it from every angle. And over the line, it is King. Second place is Tatum, doing well to hang on. Third place, Cook. And the Americans showing all their determination and national pride there. They were left behind, they split them up, they took them apart. And really, young Tatum did well to hang on to split them in the final analysis. Coming up to heat six, there's the score, and England will now look to their top pairing of Chris Morton and the disgruntled, but possibly reinvigorated Michael Lee to stop the rot here in heat six. There are the partnerships. Let's have a look at the way they peel off on the grid on the inside. It's Sean Moran, unbeaten and untroubled in his opening ride. Next to him, Michael Lee. He must be careful not to touch the tapes. Grid three had Sam Urmalenko, who had a real fighting battle in second place in his opening ride on the outside. Chris Morton, who has indeed been England's only race winner. He is on the outside here. And this one could well be something very special because we have four guys in here who will give nothing away in heat six. With the Americans leading 21-9 and England beginning to look for inspiration up on the inside. Moran's got a terrific start. So too is Morton from the outside. Ermolenko has gone with them as well. And Lee has stopped. Lee has stopped. The Americans are in front. And the race continues. And we wonder what is the matter with Michael Lee. But the Americans are running rampant. In front, it is Moran. Second place, Ermolenko. Third place is Morton. And this is getting dangerously like an annihilation. And this laughing lead, really unhappy. The start was clean enough. And it was Ermolenko who really put himself around, as we know this lad does at the first turn. And the lead comes off, is it the bike or is it him? We'll have to find out afterwards.